Welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing Medicaid and some potential major changes to this program that could impact low-income individuals all across the country. I have all the details and exactly what you need to know right here in this video, so let's get into it and discuss what's going on. First off, thank you so much for liking and sharing this video with those buttons right down below. I really appreciate it. Also, if you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe to the channel as well by clicking the big subscribe button right down below. Your support means a lot, especially during these weird times. Thank you. Alright, so like I said, today we're talking about Medicaid. Before we dive in any further, I want to clarify really quickly that everything I'm talking about in this video pertains to Medicaid, not Medicare. These programs are very similar but also very different, and the beneficiaries who receive benefits and coverage from Medicaid and Medicare are also quite distinct. So, to be clear, we're focusing on Medicaid in this video. As of now, there are about 65 to 66 million people enrolled in Medicare and about 72 million people enrolled in Medicaid. That's a lot of people we're talking about here, right? So, today... Our focus is on the 72 million people enrolled in Medicaid. Now, I want to bring to your attention an idea that's been floating around and has been implemented in some states. This idea has not been enacted nationwide yet, but it's something that could potentially impact Medicaid recipients. So, let's dive into what might be changing and how it could affect low-income individuals and Medicaid as a whole. First, it's important to note that while Medicaid is federally funded, it is administered by the states. This means that some aspects of the program can vary from state to state, which can make it a bit complicated. But overall, Medicaid has similar rules across the board. One potential change being discussed is the implementation of work requirements for Medicaid recipients. Now, I want to emphasize that this is not currently implemented on a federal level, but it's something being considered. This idea would require able-bodied adults without dependents, ABODs, to fulfill work requirements to be eligible for Medicaid. Currently, the state of Georgia is the only state that has enacted such work requirements. In Georgia, ABODs must complete 80 hours of work or work equivalent activities per month to remain eligible for Medicaid. These activities can include employment, volunteering, vocational training, or education. Essentially, it's about 20 hours per week. Now, you might be wondering if this means you need to get a full-time job to keep your Medicaid benefits. The answer is no. The requirements can be fulfilled through various activities as mentioned earlier. But again, this is currently only in place in Georgia and has not been implemented federally. This potential change would only apply to ABODs, which means able-bodied adults without dependents within a specific age range. If you're outside of this age range or have dependents, you would not be subject to these work requirements. Similarly, if you have a disability, you would not be considered an ABOD. To give you some context, during the public health emergency declaration from January 2020 to April 2023, Medicaid enrollment increased significantly as people could not be disenrolled from the program. This led to Medicaid enrollment numbers nearing 100 million people at its peak. However, with the end of this public health emergency, there's been an ongoing process called the Medicaid Unwinding, where people are being removed from Medicaid as eligibility is reassessed. One reason for discussing work requirements is to manage the Medicaid program's sustainability and ensure that those who need it most can access it. However, implementing such requirements on a federal level would take time and careful consideration. While these potential changes are not yet in place, it's crucial to stay informed and aware of what might be coming. If these work requirements were to be implemented federally, it would take a while to roll out. So, there's no immediate need to worry, but it's always good to be prepared and informed. As always, I'm here to keep you updated on any changes that could impact your benefits, whether it's Medicaid, SNAP, Social Security, or any other low-income assistance programs. If you have any questions or need further clarification, please leave your comments down below. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video. Your support helps keep this channel going, and I appreciate every one of you. Check out the other videos on my channel for more information and updates on these topics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.